watch this. You're going to be like so super impressed with this. This is, this is high tech is what I'm saying. Talk is cheap. It's overrated. My I can't talk right now. What I'm actually saying. <laughs> In the One end, second. what you do that's going to hang around. I said talk is cheap. It's overrated, my actions speak what I'm actually saying Cause in the end, what you do that's gonna hang around Well, I've said a lot of things Don't amount to nothing, nothing, nothing Well, I've heard a lot of things Well, I've seen a lot of things Well, I've said a lot of things Well, I've seen a lot of things. Well, I've said a lot of things that don't amount to nothing. Well, hello, and welcome to Talk is Cheap, the show where you get what you pay for. That's right, because uh, here at Talk is Cheap, we have no budget whatsoever. So uh, we just want to welcome everybody here. If you're here tonight for the first time, or if you're here tonight for the second time, or anyway, make some noise in the comments. We want to know, uh, we want to say hello to you. And Michelle says, it's going to be a fun night tonight. And it is, Michelle. You're right. It is going to be a fun night because we have a great show. Um, tonight we have Dave Sinclair. Um, he is a, a comedy buddy and um, we've done shows together and he has an open mic weekly. And so he's a lot of fun. I can't wait to have him on. And um, also, Jeremy Rochford is back. That's right. He's back to help us take off some pounds. Not that I have any to take off. And then my co-host, well, I'll introduce him to you in a few minutes. But um, yes, it's going to be fun tonight. Um, it's been beautiful here. The weather's been so nice here in Rhode Island. How's the weather been where you're at? Um, let us know. Um, so the other night this happened to me. Um, I... Uh, I've been trying to not eat so late at night. And so um, I brushed my teeth early. I flossed. And uh, then I proceeded to eat uh, four to five, who's counting, Oreo cookies where I brushed and flossed my teeth again. Because this is how it's become. Today, you guys, I made a chocolate chip muffins and blueberry muffins. Um, I haven't stopped baking. Um, so the COVID-19, I think it's 19 pounds that I'm gaining. It's scary. So uh, let me know if you're baking, you're eating. Um, uh, Michelle says I look shiny. Um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Maybe it's the lighting. Do I look less shiny now, Michelle? Thank you, I think. I don't know if that's a good thing. Um, Jeremy says, this is going to be epic. Yes, probably just from the information that I've uh, that I've given him. Uh, so thanks, Jeremy. I can't wait to have you on. I'm kind of scared to have Jeremy on, to be honest with you. Um, Emily said, you look especially beautiful tonight. Emily, I love you. Okay? I'm not going to lie. I love you. All right? And, uh, and I guess that's... Audra says, I gained a Brent. Well, oh my goodness, that is crazy. Hey, you guys, good to see you. I don't know if it's both of you, Brent and Audra, or just Audra, but hello. And uh, it's, a, it's a fine, it's fine, it's a glow. So I have a glow. So I don't know if that's a good glow or a bad glow or whatever. Fire your lighting guy, Michelle says. I love my lighting guy, guy, guy too. I love him, and I'm not going to. And, uh, and my, uh, it's just Audra. It's just Audra. Okay, Audra. I just want to know. And she said, my eyebrows are on fleek. Well, thank you. I uh, spent a little extra time on them tonight. No, I don't know. Actually, um, I hadn't had makeup on all day today. And I put it on for you people. Because I'm going to be honest with you. If I didn't, I would scare people. So, but... 
Glad you're here. Um, like I said, we have a really fun show. Um, I am going to bring up my co-host tonight. Now, the Boston Globe described him as one of the top names in New England stand-up comedy. That's right. The Boston Globe, you guys. He's a highly sought-after corporate entertainer. He's performed in nightclubs and casinos and all around the country. And tonight, for the very first time, for his debut, this is going to uh, propel his career. I'm sure of it. Please welcome my friend, comedian, Steve Bjork, everybody. Hey. Hey, Steve. Good to see hey, you. Hey, Rhonda. I, I am thrilled to be here. Well, I'm uh, excited in my, in my own here. bedroom. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad you're here. And I've noticed since the last time I've seen you in person that um, you've added a little uh, facial hair. Yeah, this is uh, this is the, my COVID look. I got the <laughs> hair. I got uh, long hair now. Oh yeah, um, yeah, and uh, about twenty extra pounds, which the beard kind of helps to cover a little bit. You were talking about eating late at night, and I got to yeah. tell you, that's why I enjoy daylight savings time, because then it's not so late. Ah, you get to eat. You have an extra hour to eat. I like that. Yeah, yeah I, I like just that. turn the clock ahead anytime I want. That's cool. So have, have, have you seriously, like I seriously have put on, you know, at, for a while I was doing okay. And I was like, I thought I was beating it. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm good. I, I think I'm beating it. And then I got on the scale one day and I swear it was from one day to the next. It was like five pounds heavier. So I need a new scale. Yeah. That's the, that's the whole problem is the scale issue. Right. Um, and yes, I, I actually, I had lost uh, about a hundred pounds. And then uh, quarantine hit, and I started sitting on the couch and doing a whole lot of nothing and didn't really eat much different. I ate more, but not terrible stuff, and uh, just started putting on the pounds. Just, just lack a wonderful, of, beautiful thing. Lack of, of, of moving around, right? And just not. Yeah. It's, who would have thought, thought, thought that was connected to weight gain? I have no idea. <laughs> Jeremy's probably going to let us in on that. So um, now I know that you have – performed at least one show since you were the I was at the last show the last show that I ever that I ever did um since the COVID hit um I performed with you that night yeah and uh so that was the last show I did yeah I think I did I did one I think the week after that I did uh I had two shows that night and then everything else was canceled until uh, just last weekend. I did an outdoor show at Tupelo Hall in uh, Derry, New Hampshire, uh, which was a lot of fun. And this Thursday, I'm doing another outdoor show uh, up in Hollis, New Hampshire. So uh, live comedy is coming back. Please come out and support live comedy. Yeah. So what, so what is that going to look like? So if people want to go um, to that show, um, so do you have to bring your own chairs? So you said it's an outdoor venue. So how does that, how does that going to work? Uh, I don't have the slightest idea because I'm not <laughs> producing the show. All I know is I go out, I show up, I tell mm -hmm. some jokes and I know the stage is going to be at least six feet away from people. So I, you know, if, if they're all crowded in together, that's fine with me. Um, I don't have to, I'm not going to get within six feet of them and, uh, and they'll give me a check, which I will deposit by uh, taking a picture of it. So I don't have to touch the check. Everybody's going to be going to, everybody's going to be healthy. That's good. That's good. That's going to be fun. Um, I actually have a show coming up that was postponed. Um, I'm actually supposed to just talk to her today. And um, so we'll probably talk maybe a little after the show, but um, it is a bridal shower. So yeah, it's, <laughs> and I believe it's going to be outdoors. It was supposed to be in a restaurant and, uh, so it's going to be fun because these women are probably, you know, they haven't gotten together. And so I'm kind of excited about it. But um, so I just hope I can remember my material. Like I haven't, you know, I mean, you're so used, you're used to like going up every week and, you know, or maybe it's every two weeks or whatever. And uh, so this should be interesting. So I'm going to be telling my jokes around the house a lot. And my dog will in, uh, really appreciate that. He hasn't heard them in a while. 
yeah, there was some definitely some rust I had to shake off. I that was uh, I'd been off stage for two and a half months. That's the longest I've ever been off stage in almost thirty years. Wow, wow, yeah. that is so that's was, crazy. Yeah, too funny. Well, you know, tonight uh, we have um, somebody that's going to help us with that extra weight that we may have gained. Um, I don't know if I want to hear some of the things that he's going to say to me. I'm a little scared. I'm not going to lie to you, um, but we we are going to bring him up and he is going to help us. He's a highly sought after personal trainer and life coach. He's an award winning athlete, best selling author and TEDx speaker. But more importantly, though, what makes all of this make sense is he's lost 200 pounds and he's kept it off for over 15 years. I can't even keep five pounds off. He kept 200 pounds off. I can't even keep five pounds off in a couple of months. But anyway, he's going to share some of his knowledge with us. I'm really excited about it. Please welcome back for the second time, Jeremy Rochford. Yes, do you like that? See, yes. We, I love it. We stepped it up here. We, we brought out the old uh, very expensive app because... Uh, that's how it is now. Yeah. What I love is you, you tout that you get what you pay for. Yes. But, but people applauding me when I enter a room, way more. Like that, that is amazing value. And for like the next 10 minutes, what people are going to learn would cost them like $35. So this is, this, is, this is the digital equivalent of walking into like a Sam's Club or a Costco and getting a free sample. My this God. is like free fitness expertise with like a little stick in it. I love that. And yeah. and don't throw your stick on the ground afterwards because that's rude. Well, that's, throw it down, I mean, that's not pick your... it up. Throw it down, pick it up, cardio. <laughs> so. yeah. Jeremy, that's not your advice to losing weight is go to Costco's for all the free samples. <laughs> isn't it? Well, I mean, if you want to ball on a budget, there are other ways to approach it. But that's, that's a solid strategy, right? Because if you take that money and reapplicate it to the gym or the at-home fitness equipment, all of a sudden, you're killing two birds with one stone. All right, Jeremy. I, I have, need to lose. I've invested in some uh, at uh, at home gym equipment, and uh, uh, it's it's gaining value. <laughs> and the thing is, like, even if you don't use it, you'll get a workout when you take it from your house and put it on Craigslist. <laughs> so it's a total win all the way around. <laughs> That's helpful. That is helpful. <laughs> well, that is my goal here. My goal okay. is to be helpful. So hopefully, I'm going to give three tips on okay. how to lose the quarantine fifteen. Okay. And if you do just one of these three things, I guarantee you it'll happen by the end of summer. But if you do all three, boom, it'll happen that much faster. I'm going to have my body back from when I was 25. Anything's possible. I mean, yeah. and, and but honestly, though, like, here's where it would have to start. Okay. You mentioned, like, I thought I was doing well. And that is truthfully the mindset that a lot of us had during the COVID pandemic. But now that things are starting to open up, we genuinely need to shift our mindset from survival to thriving. And I know it's sing-songy, but it's true. So many of us went into this like, just let me get through this. Just let me get out of this. Let me just get like, just let me deal. But now like the sun's here and we don't have to wear masks anymore in certain places. So if you can shift your mindset from I've just got to survive this to how do I start to get back to the things I did beforehand? All of the good habits that I let go during this because life's back. So, so step one is going to be change that mindset. Get out of survival mode because we can get toilet paper again now. Everything's great. <laughs> and start shopping in a way that supports nutrition and health and wellness. So that will be the first thing. You get that right, then the next two things are going to become Super simple for you. Okay. Jeremy, before you go on to tip number two, let me ask you. Now, I have been told, and I've been kind of practiced this, mm -hmm. that if you shop the perimeter of the supermarket, that's the best strategy for, for staying healthy. Very solid. And let me just kind of break that down for a second. The whole goal is for you to eat something your body will digest and metabolize as soon as possible and not store as fat. So take something like a cracker or a Twinkie that's designed to sit on a shelf, chemically induced quite often, for three to six months. What's it gonna do inside of you? 
Now take that same mindset and put it towards a carrot. You put a carrot on the shelf and it's probably going to rot within 24 hours or so. So how much more easily will your body metabolize that carrot than that box of crackers or graham crackers? So you're absolutely right. And the whole mindset behind it is you want your body to metabolize that food for energy as quick as possible so that when you want to lose weight, well, you've already burned off the food you've ate. Time to use that fat excess. It's time to use those stores so that you can start thinning down in the way that you want. So that is really solid. And that is right. That's absolutely right. All right. I have it a does question. Make it, it does make it difficult, though, to uh, get paper products into the into the house. But um, true because they're all in the interior aisles. Pros and Let cons. me ask you this too, on the on the like the on the dairy section, mm -hmm. they've got all this all these low fat options, uh, yogurt and so forth and so on. And you don't that is a fallacy, right? You don't want to go with the low fat stuff. It's beyond that, to be honest with you. Here's the thing, and I don't know if you've ever watched. There is a the Simpsons have done everything, and there's a Simpsons spoof where they did the. Uh, a get smart parody where he goes through like 18 checkpoints just to get to the office. And then he looks behind them and this, this raggedy old screen door and Santa's little helper comes in. The same point goes with a lot of the low fat, gluten-free, all these things. Quite often we pay so much attention to these little minute 1%, 2% fat, no fat that we won't even stop to maybe not eat food after we brush our teeth. And it's those little things that, if we just paid attention to the bigger picture, that these little things that we obsess on would actually take care of themselves. So if you were to just take, let's say, a food journal and say, I'm going to be responsible and I'm going to be aware of all the things that I eat. And you start looking at all the things that you do, whether it's mindfully or mindlessly, you'll find that you're eating so much more. Maybe you're grazing. Maybe you don't know what a portion size is. All of those things, or your amount of water, those things matter so much more than is it 2% versus 1%. So to the actual question, yeah, it, it to some degree is a fallacy. But to me, I would take it a step further and say, well, what's the genuine root here? Because you can nickel and dime all day long, but really foundationally understanding what a portion size is, choosing foods that are going to serve you well, that won't get metabolized as fat. And getting proper hydration will serve you way more than trying to, to, to play that game because it's all marketing in the end. Yeah, for me, portion size is generally when I start to feel self-loathing. Um, yeah. And I always wonder when we get the, like the one, you were talking about like 1% fat. Do you ever wonder where, where does that other 99% go? Like, do they have a vault full of like just the excess fat from all these products? It's, it's with all the left socks we lose in the washer. They keep each other warm. That makes a good sense. answer. That makes sense. Um, I was, I kind of got excited when you said, um, you know, if you would put something on the shelf and it wouldn't last very long. Now, obviously the Oreo, okay, that would last a long time. And I get that. But if you put like heavy cream and cheese on the shelf. Wait, wait so you, like what kind of cheese do you have that would just stay? Because if. Uh, it, Velveeta. Well, that, it, no, but is I, that really I'm cheese, thinking, though? Like, that's, I'm thinking, that's like I'm, below government cheese. That is like... A government I'm, thinking I'm halfway to an Alfredo sauce right now, is what I'm thinking. Butter, that's not going to last that long on the shelf. The cheese in, isn't going to last very long if I let it sit out. Neither is the heavy cream. I've pretty much got Alfredo sauce right now. But um, and, let's be frank, nothing's going to last very long on my shelf. <laughs> well, and, and the good news, what I love about this part of the conversation is we're completely proving point number one, which is changing your mindset. Because quite often we will fight for the things that are keeping us the most overweight. And we quite often feel like we're neglecting ourselves when we look at the things that we could benefit from, from weight loss, as if we don't deserve that too. Like, like we don't deserve to just walk into Target and feel the esteem of not if this will fit, but I know this will fit. What size? Or something as simple as for me fitting in, well, hey, you know what? Who doesn't? But the point is, is that you're nailing it. It's, it's that mindset of how much is this worth it to me? And right. what am I willing to press pause on for a little bit so I can have that and then reintroduce that back when it comes time to weight maintenance? Right. 
because honestly, honestly, though, I this is this is my mindset. And I'll be honest with you. I have a wardrobe that I really like, Jeremy, OK, mm -hmm. that I've built my wardrobe. And so I am not going to allow myself to get to grow out of that wardrobe. Yeah. So when things start getting a little tight, I know it's time. You know, I mean, seriously, like that's my bar. I'm like, I can't afford to buy new clothes. I can afford to like replace something, but I can't afford to buy a new wardrobe. So that's seriously, that is like my bar. And I, and that's when I'm like, look, I have to do something about it. So that, that's and, and, that is, a and that's yes. I mean, <laughs> m minus the gratuitous nudity, that is so important <laughs> because that is way right. much more important than a scale. So many people get so obsessed with what the scale says. But you probably feel so much more esteem when you fit into clothes and you look in the right. mirror and you go, damn, yeah, that is right, than any number on a scale. And you're right. Like, there are certain things, like me, like I wore, why did I wear long sleeves? It's summer. I'm sweating because I'm wearing long sleeves. But I like this shirt. But the way we feel in certain pieces of clothing, mm -hmm. that's worth fighting for. And so I'm the same way. My barometer is 200 pounds. As a six-foot male, if I get over 200 pounds, I know that me personally, I'm just being lazy anything below it is great. Anything above it's like, ooh, like what am I not doing? But you're absolutely right. We've got those things that we tour with, those things, that, those stage attires that we just love. And, and that's what's worth fighting for. So when you look at things, it's not like I'm giving up Alfredo to lose weight. It's right. I'm pressing pause on Alfredo until I'm not pouring out of pants X or shirt Y. And then once you've got back there, okay, well, let's back to weight maintenance. You can just bring those things back in in the appropriate serving size. Right. So so once you get to that point, how often is I don't know. See, I you know, you know the people that push it to the limit. I'm that put so how often is okay? No, you I mean, so you can incorporate things back. You just don't make it a habit. Is is right? Yeah, when when I'm working with people like one on one with weight loss, I, I hate to use the words good and bad. Like, is it a good choice? Is it a bad choice? Is it a good like? Because we're not children, right? We're all right. adults. I like to break it down in this: we've got foods that eat, we can eat for weight loss. We've got foods that we can eat for weight maintenance, and we have foods that we know will cause us to gain weight. So we've got weight loss decisions, weight maintenance decisions, and weight gain decisions. Depending on where you're at and what your goals are would dictate how you're eating. So if you genuinely want to lose weight, eating foods that would cause you to maintain or gain weight, would it make sense? But likewise, once you've lost that weight and you've got to your goal, whether it's a shirt size, a number on the scale, maybe triglyceride, like whatever it is, well, then you're not trying to lose weight anymore. You're eating for weight maintenance. And weight maintenance is going to look a lot different than weight loss. And when you can have that mindset of, I don't have to give up Reese's forever. It makes life a lot more freeing because you can have Reese's, but right. when are you having it? Why are you having it? That's what makes all the difference. So absolutely, there is a time and a place for everything. But if you're genuinely trying to lose weight, eating foods that you know will cause you to gain weight, right. not the best decision. It's like trying <laughs> to spend yourself out of debt. Right. Oh, that's a good phrase that I hate. <laughs> Sorry. Like, and that was by no, no means a political statement. And I'm sure like Dave Ramsey's radar went off because we're talking about dead over the internet. I know. So. I know it. That's true. That's true. Um, Michelle says that her scale yells, oof, <laughs> get off when she's on it. And she said, seriously, though, these are great tips, Jeremy. So, all right. So number one was. Number one was change your mindset. Change your mindset. Because we were in a survival mode. But okay. now we're no longer. So we've All got right. to sort of let that go in the past, okay. embrace the new. The second thing is to level up. I work with a lot of people who used to be athletic, either pre-kid or like in high school they were athletes. And they'll just try to jump back into things. Mm -hmm. But they forgot that now they have a back problem or they're missing <laughs> an ACL. And a lot of us haven't been active for two months, three months, maybe our lives. Mm -hmm. So going from zero to 60 is a really easy way to burn yourself out and feel terrible. So step number two in this, once you've changed your mindset, is always try to level up. So if you've done literally nothing for the past two months, this week, do 10 minutes, walking around the stairs, maybe, you know what, you can go to Target and 
go and do, do I call laps. it uh, the, the lap of clearance. So rather than shopping for food, you do it the lap of clearance. You see what what discounts did I miss? But that's 10 minutes of cardio that you didn't get. But can, pro tip. If I can you get go, that in a mall. I can get that in a mall yeah. like that. But the point is to be deliberate and more pro tips. If you get to the store 10 minutes before they're about to close, you will walk faster. It's true. So and you will shop harder. And that's exactly it. And the whole point is to level up. So if you've okay. gone from doing nothing, try to make it 10 minutes a day this week. If All you're right. already at 20 minutes a day, try to do 30 next week. Go to the mall for 30. I got this. Just do something better today than you did yesterday. Okay. And then try to make tomorrow even better. All right. What do you have for number three? Number three is get into the mindset of helping others while you help yourself. So from the nutrition side, farmers markets are opening up. Mm. They need commerce. We need fresh food. That's a win-win. Likewise, there have been a lot of people who are a little bit older, and I'll use my mom for example. So my mom wasn't able to see her grandkids, but she also wasn't allowed to do, like, she didn't feel safe doing yard work. Well, now the grandkids can go over. We're moving rocks. We're getting like three hours of cardio in moving rocks, but also my mom got her yard landscaped. And I'm, I, I'm sure we all know that one or that other sweet little old lady or individual in our neighborhood, is there a way that we can help them maybe restore their yard or do some chores for them while also getting ourselves active? Because exercise doesn't have to be like, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to do a press. Like you can go do some yard work for 20 minutes, for 30 minutes. You can accomplish something right. tangible, but also start to jiggle less. And always look for those win-win situations. Like what I like to do is I like running but I also like learning. So for me, I always listen to a podcast mm -hmm. or a sermon or an audio book. So when I think about running, I've trained myself mentally to go, it's learning time. I don't have to hear anything. My kids aren't going to bother me. Not they're annoying, but they're annoying. And although like, it's just, it's me time. It's me time. Right. And so how can you find the win-win in the exercise or in the nutrition? Where not only you benefit, but someone else benefits, That's especially good. in this time. That's good. All right, Jeremy, you've motivated me. So the next time you come back, first of all, I'm going to change my mindset. I'm going to go shopping uh, to get some kind of exercise in, and I'm going to help somebody else pick out some clothes when I go shopping. So that will that will help everybody. And then, right? Like, so if, if, if you can help them get the taller stuff, you get that yoga right. stretch in, right? Like mm. There you go. See, there and you is. know what? Trying on clothes and taking them off, I mean, that is that is a lot of work. I get tired from that. Well, if you try on a size smaller, just the amount of effort you got to put in. <laughs> or try to fit into the size you want to fit into. No, these are go. great tips. And uh, seriously, like, just, you know, it, it is good to – take exercise and equate it to something else rather than just, you know, going to the gym or just running, you know, you know, you can think about going for a walk and doing yard work and even up and down this, you know, stairs, doing laundry, stuff like yep. that. Those are things that you can accomplish something and feel good about having, you know, using some muscles and working out. These are great, Jeremy. So, oh, you know, you. I love having you on, Jeremy. I am going to have you back again because you, you are. You're so helpful. If you want to follow Jeremy, it's Jeremy Rochford on Facebook, Jeremy Rochford on Instagram and Twitter. And check out the Jeremy Rochford, I mean, the Rochford Wellness Academy dot com. That's Rochford Academy, Rochford Wellness Academy dot com. <laughs> I will say it 27 more times. The Rochford Wellness Academy dot com. Com. Thank you, Jeremy, for being here. I really appreciate it. And even though I was joking around, I really, I am going to listen to what you said. I might not like it. And I, I mean, at first, you know, it's kind of like, you know, going to the dentist a little bit anyway, but re really appreciating yeah. your tips. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. Jeremy, I thought you were great. I'm going to do more than tomorrow than I did yesterday. I'm going to, yesterday I moved from the car to the chair twice. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm going to move four times. Progress. And I like your idea of, of helping, of getting the mindset of helping others. I'm going to help others by letting the neighborhood kids do my landscaping, <laughs> which I think was a great idea. That's a great so, idea. So uh, I really, really appreciate you, you being on the show, Jeremy. I'm here to help. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> appreciate Thanks, it. Bye. I'll see that was helpful. And I like having somebody else do my um, yard work too. That's helpful. Maybe we can get some of the neighborhood kids and you know what? It's good for them.
it's good. Yeah, to it's help all about out. it's all about the kids. It's all, it's always about the kids, Steve. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Um, Donnell said she went for a walk and listened uh, to this morning sermon. You go, Donnell. See that way you're not just sitting there. You're getting you're getting fed in many different ways. I love it. All right, so we are going to bring up we are going to bring up our next guest. Um, oh wait, Mike. Mike says he received his prize today. His T I his my Tis prize. What is T I S? Oh, <laughs> talk is sheep. Talk is sheep. Talk is sheep. Talk, talk is sheep. Is sheep. All yeah. right. Maybe that's what he was trying to say, but he's very excited. He's so excited he can't type. I don't know. <laughs> Yay, Mike. I'm glad you got it. You know what you need to do? If you receive your your uh, prize, then you need to take a, a selfie with it, and you need to post it, okay? He said, talk is cheap. Duh. Sorry, Mike. Whatever. Um, what, is the, what is the prize, Rhonda? Oh, you're going to see in a minute. Oh, you're going to yeah, see no in a idea minute. Right. It's going to blow. It is, it is going to blow your mind okay all right so we're gonna bring up our next guest and i know you know him already he's a stand-up comedian he performs throughout the northeast stage screen and voice actor he starred in the family movie footprints which is now available on amazon prime and tonight we're really gonna uh propel his career uh right now because he is going to be here for his very first appearance on talk is cheap please welcome Dave Sinclair. Wait. Dave Sinclair. Okay, sorry. Dave Sinclair. You put a whistle in there. Did you hear it? Yes. I know. I know. How is how is exciting? How exciting is that? I can't speak today. I love it. I'd like to buy a vowel, please. How are you doing, yeah, Dave you Sinclair? I'm doing good. I was inspired by Jeremy. I really was. Just before the show, I'd ordered a pizza. It was delivered, and I donated it to the people next door. <laughs> just... That is so helpful and so yeah. sweet. Luckily, luckily I, well, I don't like it. them. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like them. They light off fireworks, so let them get fat. Yeah, there you go. There, there you go. go. But it is, it's nice. That was sweet of, uh, of you. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, anyway. <laughs> Anyway, I can't talk today. So, have you been e have you been eating extra though since you've been home more? Because I, yeah, I seriously I, I, have. I've actually gained fifteen pounds, um, like everybody else. But we started doing projects around the house, and I've actually dropped three pounds over the last uh, three or four days. So, oh wow, that's so good. I'm excited. So I'm trending back the other way now. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, I miss going to the open mic that you have weekly. I do, too. Um, as of right now, the governor has not allowed any gatherings of over 15 people. Um, and absolutely. So that, that shouldn't preclude your open mic, should it? That's no, I no, actually. <laughs> that's, what but, I, um, that's what I said. Hmm. But. And well, well, that's what I said to them. And they said, but the other problem is there's also a ban in Massachusetts on live entertainment. And I said, again, that shouldn't <laughs> be a problem. We're not entertaining. And uh, but they they still said no. So we're we're hopeful it maybe by mid July um, we'll be back at it. But uh, Rhode Island open mics are running. Um, I know that Pup on Park is up and running. So. And you're going to be there Monday. I'm going to see. Maybe I will join you on Monday. I'm going tomorrow night. Just remember, if you go, you have to bring your own sock to I know. put over the microphone. You put a sock over the microphone. I'm not going to lie to you. I've uh, I've uh, always done that there. <laughs> no, I yeah, i got to tell you, I don't think I want to use a microphone that somebody else's sock has been on. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't I don't think that, doesn't, that doesn't scream cleanliness to me. <laughs> I, I'm seriously thinking of just bringing my own mic and just saying, "Here, just plug this into the board. Let me do my stuff, and I'll take my mic and go home." Can you can you use I'm, like I'm old. I'm very sanitizer? Can you use sanitizer like on the microphone? Can you use a like a a wipe? I don't see why you couldn't. As long as there's not a lot of liquid, I mean, liquid getting yeah. into the electronics yeah. could mess it yeah, up. Yeah, that could be fun. Uh, <laughs> that could be interesting. Hey, so I have to ask you this. Um, either of you uh, competitive, would you say you're competitive? Yes. Yes. 
<laughs> okay. Well, good. Okay. Um, what did she? Um, Rhonda used the French bulldog slipper sock I gave you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I never got that French bulldog. That would be so cute though, to have like one of those, you know, those socks that they have that they have the, I guess not. All right. Anyway, I guess you had to be there. Uh, anyway, um, so on Talk is Cheap, there, one of my favorite segments is the game segment. And I created the segment because I love to play games. Nobody in my house plays games. So um, I wanted to play games. So I just decided that that's what I was going to do on my own show because I can and no one can stop me. And this is my favorite part because I pit my guests against each other, which is more hey, fun. Her. <laughs> so here. We're going to riot. <laughs> no riot. We're pick it. No riot. We're no riot, it. please. Um, We're going to pick so, it. So what we do here is um, you have the opportunity, okay? Um, let me see. Oh, my gosh. Michelle, she said that you're going to win. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Michelle. I know. That's hurtful to Dave. Anyway, that's, you have the that's opportunity. Based on what, Michelle, believe me, Michelle, I appreciate that. But that's based on what? I don't, I, don't, we don't, I, don't, I don't know what the game is. I guys, have no idea. Guys with beards are smarter than guys without beards. Is that, <laughs> is that how you base it on? Listen, all right, this is what you can win, you guys. This is the coveted, very coveted Rhonda Corey comedy hand sanitizer, 100% clean comedy. Yes, I'm telling you, this is valued at $5,000. All right. Everybody wants one. delicious. I know. And don't, I, I don't think you're going to. Anyway, now hand sanitizer, says, dessert topping, and floor wax. That's right. You can do whatever oh, you want with this. Uh, um, Michelle is a fair weather friend, apparently. Yes, that's how she is. You know, don't believe her at all. Um, well, I, I just I, sent her money on Venmo. So <laughs> that'll, that'll help. But that's not how you're going to win the game. Okay. Okay. How you're going to win the game. Tonight's game. Uh, this section is called. This segment is called "You've Got Game," and tonight's game is called "Don't Touch That Dial." Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, all right, you guys, enough now. All right, so um, I don't know. Have you watched a lot of TV in your life? We're comics, of course, we have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good to know. And not just, uh, this is sitcoms we're going to be talking here. Okay. You are going to get to pick uh, either 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, or 2000s. Each round, you're going to get to pick. Um, so you can pick a different, for each round, you can pick your, a different decade? That's right. Now, okay. I so Dave, whatever you choose, you're going to go first because of our little coin toss that we had backstage, Rhonda style, and um, uh, <laughs> whatever. Um, nobody was there, and trust me, it was totally fair. And anyway, so the yeah, coin. I got to tell you, I've got to protest it to the commissioner on this. <laughs> you you go right ahead. You go right ahead, and you're going to get far with that. Um, anyway, so. What you're going to do is we are going to give you a description of what the sitcom is. You need to name that sitcom. If you cannot name that sitcom, Steve, you are going to get a chance to steal. Okay? All right. All right. This, so is, all for the, this is all for the sanitizer? This is for the Ronda yeah. Corey Comedy 100% Clean Comedy Hand Sanitizer valued at $5,000. Okay. And that's our show. And that's it. Uh, so anyway, all right. So you are going to need to pick, choose your uh, choose your uh, categories. Will it be 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, or? What will, happened to this plant? I don't know. How should I take care of it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, here at uh, Odd Talk is Cheap, we, uh, we just... Uh, we spare no expense, and uh, sometimes. I feel like I'm on Fernwood was, tonight. Was that the question? <laughs> no, no, that wasn't the question. We spare no expense here, so um, that was uh, our sound machine. Okay, uh, and sometimes it goes off on its own. All right. So anyway, all right. What is the what? Are, what are you choosing there, Dave? 
Uh, Alex, I'll take the 70s for $100. All right, 70s for uh, one point. Okay, it's one point this round. All right, 70s. Your clue is a wise cracking teacher who returned to his alma mater to teach a remedial class called the Sweat Hogs. What? What is what is Welcome Back Carter? Welcome Back Carter is correct. That is right. Um, I, you know what? Hold on. I take exception. He said Welcome Back Carter. It's mm -hmm. Welcome Back Carter. <laughs> I think he knows. Mr. Cartier. Yes. I think he gets it. I think he gets it. All so, right. All right, Steve. Come on. I'm just trying All to right. win. Any chance I can get that sanitizer. <laughs> All right. You can pick 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, or 2000. You know what? I'm going to go with 70s as well. All right. 70s. The clue is a single independent woman who is an associate producer. The for Mary the Tyler Moore Show. That's right. You are correct. It is a tied score. All right. Dave. What Rhonda? year are you going to pick? Let's go up to the 80s. 80s. Okay, 80s sitcom. Your clue is an Italian-American major league player works as a living housekeeper for a divorced advertising executive. You know, it's Tony Danza, but I can't remember the name of the series. So You're going to pass? So, Steve, you can steal it. Are you going to you get it, Steve? Well, who's the boss on the show? That's what ah, I mean. that's right. Who's the boss? The score now is one to two. All right, Steve, go ahead. Let's let's see if we can challenge ourselves. Let's go back to the sixties. Okay, there's only one sixties. Oh no, 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 no. There's only one seventies left, but there's three sixties left. Okay, sixties. Right. Your clue is. A witch who marries an ordinary mortal man and vows to lead the life of a typical suburban housewife. Bewitched. Bewitched is the correct answer. Steve's crushing it. Come on, Dave. What's your category? Uh, uh, let's go to the 80s again. 80s. And your clue is... Yeah, you did so well in the first one. <laughs> I know. The regulars of a Boston bar owned by an ex Boston Red Sox pitcher and alcoholic share their experiences in life with each other while drinking and working at the bar. Cheers, where everybody knows your name. Where everybody knows your name is correct. Ooh, and the score is two to three. All right, Steve, you're up. Uh, let's do another 70s. 70s. This is the last of the 70s. Two single girls and a single guy room together in a Santa Monica, California apartment. Three's company. Three's company, too. That is correct. <laughs> All right, Dave. What you got for me? Ah, uh, let's see. Um, let's go to the 60s. We're going back to the 60s. All right. Your clue is a bumbling secret agent. 86, and his female partner, Agent 99, work for Control, a secret U.S. government counterintelligence agency based in Washington, D.C. Get smart. That's right. You are correct. Show Jeremy referenced in his I story. know. I know. I laughed to myself. Of course, I laughed. Not out loud. I didn't. Anyway. All right. Go ahead, Steve. What do we, we got get left? You can't pick the seven. You know, dealer's choice. Dealer's choice. Dealer's choice. Okay, Alex. 90s. He says it's the 90s. Ah, crap. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get it. No problem. This is easy. Go ahead, Alex. A street smart teenager from West Philadelphia moves in with his wealthy uncle and aunt in their Bel Air mansion after getting into a fight in his hometown. So I have never once seen one episode of this show, but I have to assume it's the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. That is correct. Story of my life. <laughs> my life story. That was, that was me. West That's Philly. right. And 
Delphi, you're born and raised. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That's right. Michelle has gotten all of these, by the way. We're on a little delay. That's why I haven't been able to put them up right away. Good job, Michelle. Michelle's actually crushing it. All right. So maybe she should get the sanitizer. Yes, send her the sanitizer. Maybe she's already gotten one. Maybe that's all what right. it is. All right. So uh -huh. go ahead. Who's up? Um, Dave. Dave. That would be me. That would be you. What what's your category? Oh, um, want to go the nineties again? Nineties. All right. The daily trials and tribulations of a television show host raising three mischievous boys with the help from his loyal co-host, loving wife, and eccentric neighbor. Not a clue. Do you want to steal that, Steve? Take a guess. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, your it. time's up. <laughs> I just really wanted to press that buzzer. Um, that would be home improvement. That is right, Michelle. Michelle got it. Home improvement. Huh. All right. The score is five to three. I would never have given that show that description. Nope. Well, that's because you wouldn't have gotten it from the internet, Steve. <laughs> like <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right. What's our next uh, category? Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the 80s. 80. Actually, that was Dave's question, wasn't it? Isn't it? I think it's my turn, Dave. Yeah, steal it, the uh, competition. Turn. Yeah. yeah, that was yeah, my question. Eight, yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll, uh, I'll I'll do another dealer's choice. Dealer's choice. Okay. Which uh, hopefully you'll go with the 60s. He's going with the 2000s. All right. You got this. In trouble. No problem. I don't think I, I I stopped watching TV in the 90s, so I think I'm in trouble here. <laughs> All right. This is a chance, Larry. An American mockumentary that depicts the oh, okay. everyday life of employees in the Scranton, Pennsylvania branch of the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. Come that on. is most certainly the office. That is the office. That is right. Oh, that's, I mean, you have to know that one. Yes. All right. All right, Dave, come on. Uh, let's go the 80s. The 80s. A widowed father who enlists his brother-in-law and best friend to help raise his three daughters. You know this. Baton yeah. Rouge, Baton Rouge. Clueless. No idea. Steve, take it away. Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge. No, that's just that was just a Brady Bunch reference. Oh, father, this is Your time's up, and Michelle got it, and Donnell got oh, no. it, and anybody thing that rhymes with L got it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's one I never saw. The answer if, was if you put out. something in there about doing anything to get your daughter into a school, then I might have gotten it. <laughs> Hold on, did you say that was that? Didn't you say 80s? We said, Yeah, yeah, Full house was in the 80s. Yeah, was it really? Yeah, it might have gone into the 90s. Yeah, okay, yeah, it was but late it was 80s. 80s. I'm not gonna it was on for a while, but it was I the 80s. Quibble. Look it up. The internet I, I, does not lie, Steve. The internet. I'm, I'm amazed that I missed that because I've closely tracked the career of the Olsen twins. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I believe you would. Um, I do. I do. That's I do. too funny. It's a hobby. Right. Some people collect stamps. <laughs> All right, one more. Who's up? I'm like losing track Steve. myself. Steve, you're up. Because you passed. Right, let's let's do another two thousands. Two thousands. After divorce, an uptight brother and his troublesome son move into his brother's beachfront Malibu house, oh, okay. who is a womanizing jingle writer, and complicate his freewheeling life. Two and a half men. That's right. You won. And you are the winner. And I will have clean hands forever. <laughs> Congratulations, Steve. That is amazing. That is let's let's give him yes. a round of applause. Oh, that's just a golf clap. Sorry. 
That's all we You do. know, it's I have to tell you though, you asked uh if if we were competitive. And I said yes, and I was I didn't think I was, but I can't tell you how much I wanted to crush David during that competition. <laughs> I don't know. That's, it became that's very a typical reaction I get from most people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm so so proud of you for even just- though I I really admire the uh, that the look of being on the sidelines of the NFL games. <laughs> you know, when this arrives in your mail, you will just be able to say, you know what? I'm proud. I'm proud of myself. For I did it. Winning, you know, you you really are, and I'm proud of you. Hey, this has been what? fun. This has been put it fun. on the mantle. Oh wait, I wait. I'm going to put it on the resume too. Michelle, oh absolutely. Michelle even Michelle gave 1987. you 1987. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yes. So, <laughs> can you? My dog has to. You want to come up here? My dog wants to say hello or just, I didn't give my dog quiet moments tonight. <laughs> Anybody that watches this show uh, and like the, the millions of people that are viewing it right now know that before my show, I give my dog quiet moments. So it's uh, it's it's a, it's like a chamomile tea with a little uh, something, something in it. You want to just open that it's door? It's CBD oil, right? Um. It might have a little something extra in it, and um, I have some help here now. Do we have the dog? He's he's not only the producer, you guys. It's, but he is it's also, what gets me through, Rhonda. <laughs> I can't tell you what's in this cup. All right, uh, but there might be a little quiet moments in here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, Chewy, yes, Chewy loves to uh, make some noise. Make some noise for Chewy. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot all about the quiet moments. Uh, so we didn't have any. This time is what I'm saying. Anyway, is that pet supply company named after your dog? It should be. I think they stole that. I think they stole the name. Um, He's to Chewy what you are to Macy's. <laughs> yes, I think so. I I believe so. Hey, um, let's talk about who we're going to have on next week's show. On next week's oh, show. <laughs> show we have. As my guest co-host, the very beautiful and lovely Sherry Nettles, um, we have Nick Albanese and also making a special appearance, Ed Collins is going to be here with some refi um, uh, answers to all of your refi questions. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be a fun show. <laughs> I don't know if it could ever top this one. But uh, who knows? I mean, this one was just amazing. Yep, this one's headed right for the archives. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you guys. Hey, listen, thank you so much for um, joining me tonight on Talk is Cheap. Don't, um, don't forget to watch so the footprints on, on Prime Video. Don't forget to watch <laughs> that, it. That's why we're here. Because that's where so we're Rhonda, going. what do you do? Yeah. You just send a check to your Venmo or what? How do, how do yeah, we yeah. Check your Venmo. And... Okay. Uh, it's it's all gonna be in there, and right. uh, or it's gonna be in the mail with your uh, with your uh, hands. And that comes with their personal guarantee. If it doesn't show up, there's not much you can do about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thanks. If you want to follow Steve, um, you can follow Steve Bjork on Steve Bjork on Facebook. Comedian uh, Steve on Stephen Instagram. Bjork. What? It's actually on Facebook. It's Stephen Bjork. The oh, B-H. Stephen. Yeah, I just wanted to make Stephen it really, Bjork really on easy Facebook. I'm sorry. Comedian Steve Bjork on Instagram and stevebjork.com to catch him. If you want to follow Dave, it's David Sinclair on Facebook. And I think Dave is funny on Instagram. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. It's uh, Dave Sinclair funny. Yes. Okay. On and and um, Jeremy, if you want some of those tips again from Jeremy, Jeremy Rochford on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and the Rochford Wellness Academy dot com. Make sure you follow him. He's going to help us to get thinner. Thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Talk is Cheap. It's in the books.